Question one. And call brothers, the sum of their ages, and their father, age 61. So we have a problem here. Personally, I think all these problems are just merit. I think it's my real understanding what's going on. Because solving it is the easy part. So we have Ed plus Carl plus Dad, and that equals 61. So obviously that's our equation. Now we just got to figure out how to represent their ages. So it says that Ed is five, year old, five years older than Carl. So we have Ed, we have Carl, and we have Dad or Father. Ed is five years older than Carl. Do we know Carl's age? No, we don't. So that's going to be our X. Ed is five years older, so just five plus X, so X plus five. And the dad is six times as old as Carl. So Carl is X right now, so the dad is six times whatever that is. And that's, those are their ages right now. So we can go back to the equation, replace. Ed is five plus X. Carl is X and dad is six X. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, look how simple that is. So five plus X, so can we combine any like terms here? We can combine the, all these X's, the X plus X plus six X, we get nine X. And then, um, sorry, eight X plus five equals 61. So now it's just a two-step equation. So minus five minus five equals 56 on this side. Those two fives go away. Eight X, we divide both sides by eight. X equals seven. So if X equals seven, we can go back here, right? We can go back re here, replace the X with seven. So that makes Carl seven years old, right? Ed is five years older than that, so we're five plus seven, which makes him 12. And the dad is six times seven, which makes him 42. Now, if you think about it, if we add 12 plus seven plus 42, we should get 61. Seven and two is nine, plus two is 11, carry the one. Four plus one plus one is 61. Look at that, it does match, so. So again, same thing, it's, again, it's, I know it's repetitive, but the idea is the same, right? So we have Ray and Sig, so let's identify our guys here. So we have Ray and Sig. So it says that Ray's two years younger than Sig. Do we know Sig's age? No, so let's call him X, Y, call him whatever letter you want. So if Sig is X, Ray's two years younger, so whatever Ray is, X minus two. Now it's just a matter of reading and replacing um, the expression that represents their ages. So three times Sig's age, who's Sig, right here, so 3 times x, subtracted from, subtracted from implies subtraction, right? Subtracted from 5 times Ray's age, and what's Ray's age? x minus 2, equals, equals Sig's age, and how old is Sig? Equals Sig's age, which is x. Little something you have to pay attention to, the word subtracted from, so you have to rearrange this expression. Five, this these two fellows are going to switch positions to 5 times x minus 2 and 3x switch places, right? Because it's subtracted from. And everything else stays the same. Now, again, it's just, what do you call it? Ah, this should be a 2, so let me replace that x minus 2. Now it's just solving it. So here we go. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is negative 10 minus 3x x. Combine like terms on the left side, I can combine 5x and 3x, I get 2x. Minus 10 equals x. So the distributive property is done, combine like terms is done. Now I have variables on both sides. Get rid of one of them. So I'm gonna get rid of the smaller guy here, the x, or if you want, put a 1 there, put a 1. Um, so there's a wall. So let's subtract x from this side, which means I have to subtract x from that side. x minus x is 0. Don't leave it blank because we gotta replace all of that zero. Two x minus x is one x, and then minus ten. Now I honestly didn't need that one there, but I just put it there. So now we have x minus ten equals zero, plus ten on both sides. The minus ten the plus side goes away, and x plus ten, which means sig is eight. Sorry, sig is ten, and ray is ten minus two, which makes him eight years old.
Okay. So like I said, I think the easier part, the simple part is solving it. It's just uh, the setting it up and understanding what's going on might be the little where um, might be the problem. Find two consecutive e even integers. So if the first one is x, because they're even integers, the second one will be x plus 2. Careful here, right? So think about if your first if your first even number is 2, the next one is 4. So how, that I, how do I go from 2 to 4 would be plus 2, right? So we have two consecutive even, to even integers that I don't know. And they mention small and larger. So obviously x is a smaller even integer, and this will be the larger one. All right, identified, the players have been identified. Let's set up the equation. So twice two times the smaller, which is x, is or equals 26 less than, less than means subtraction, three times the larger, so three times the larger, and it, which is x plus two. That's our equation, but here again, we have to make a little change because of this, these two words, less than, so it's actually two x equals three parentheses x plus two, minus 26. So these two terms switch positions. And now we go back to that, say, uh, what do you call solving part. So 2x, we have to do this 3 property here. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 2 is 6, positive, minus 26. 2x equals combined like term. Yeah, I can combine these two. I get 3x and 6 minus negative 26 is negative 20. We have variables on both sides. I mean, I suggest you get rid of the smaller guy. The smaller coefficient is 2. So I'm going to subtract so because it's positive 2. To, how do I get that to become 0? I mean, to do that, I have to use the added inverse, which is negative 2x minus 2x. And then over here, because I'm subtracting 2x over here, I'm going to subtract 2x over here. Well, that equals 0. Over here, 3x minus 2x is x minus 20. Now look at that equation. It's a very one-step equation. So we do plus 20 here, plus 20 over here. These two go away, and x equals 20. So the smaller number is 20, and obviously this, the, the, the following int, uh, even integer after that would be 20 plus 2, or 22. So the two numbers we're talking about are 20 and 22. Okay, so the greater of two numbers is one less than three times the smaller. So don't worry about that yet. Okay, so here we got, so if it's greater, so obviously one is the greater number, the other one will be the smaller number. So it says here that the greater number, okay, the greater of the two numbers is one less, so one less than three times the smaller. Do we know what the smaller number is? No, we don't. So we're going to call the smaller x which means I can put x over here. So one less than three times the smallest. So those are my two numbers. One is the x, which is the smaller number, and the one that's bigger than that is going to be one minus three times x. Okay. So now <coughs> I can use that information to set up equations. So it says three times the greater number, which is this guy right here. One minus three x is or equals Five more than means addition, eight times the smaller. Times the smaller. Find the two numbers other. So there's my equation. All right, it's three property. We get three minus nine x, right? Multiply these two. Equals five plus eight x. So the three property is done. Can I combine like terms? Nothing on the left side, nothing on the right side. There are no, no like terms. I have two, I have variables though, but I, so I have to get rid of one of them. So one is a has a coefficient of negative nine, the other one has a coefficient of positive eight. So I'm gonna get rid of, let me make a wall here. So how do I get that minus x with something? How do I get that to equal zero? Well, minus nine x, in order to equal zero, I have to add nine x, right? And that gives me zero. So if I add nine x over here, I'm gonna add nine x over here. Uh, actually, I'm going to cross this out, right, because we know they're going to go away, and ooh, ooh. what just happened? Okay, I lost something. All right, so I'm going to have to do this again. All right, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Uh, what this thing is. That. 
let's go back. So again, we have two numbers, right? The greater number, and obviously if one is a greater, the other one is a smaller number. We call this number the small number x, which means the greater is one less than three times the smaller. Because it's worth less than, right? We got this switches and becomes 3x minus 1, which I might have forgot to do <coughs> on the previous one. So, so the greater number is 3x minus 1, and the small number is x. Sorry, and I, I'm glad it rebooted because I was doing it incorrectly. So that's the greater, that's the smaller. Now we can use that information to set up the equation. 3 times the greater, which is 3x minus 1, equals or is 5 more than, which is addition, 8 times the smaller, and the smaller is x. That's my equation. 9x minus, okay, this is 3 times 3 is 9, and then 3 times 1 is 3, right, but it's negative 3, so 9x minus 3 equals 5 plus 8x. We have variables on both sides. Get rid of the one the smaller coefficient if you like. That's what I'm going to do. So to get rid of plus 8x, I do minus 8x, which means I have to do minus 8x over here. Those two goes away. 5 comes down, and this is x minus 3. So again, one step equation now, even easier, plus 3, plus 3, x equals 8. So the smaller number is 8, which means the larger number was 3x minus 1, right? So let's replace the x with 8. So I get 3 times 8 minus 1. 3 times 8 is 24 minus 1, which means the larger number is 23. Five, if mother is 28 years older than her daughter, okay? So in four years, the mother will be three times as old as the daughter. How old is the mother? But mother now. So we, this one is the ones we have to set up a table. Mother, daughter. Okay, so hope you remember this. We have the now, and this is going to be plus four, right? The time is going to be four years from now. So right now, mom, we know that the mom is 28 years older than her daughter. Well, so do we, do we know the age of her daughter? No. So let's call the daughter X, which means that mom is 28 plus X. In four years, so let's add four. So in four years, the daughter is going to be x plus four. And in four years, the mom is going to be 28 plus x plus four, which we can rewrite this as, well, combine like terms, it goes 32 plus x. So that's what we know in four years. Now, in four years, now that we have that set up, we can use this part to set up our equation. In four years, the mom, which is she's represented by 32 plus x, will be or equals right three times three times as old as the daughter so three times the daughter and the daughter is x plus four and that's your equation now just solve it. 32 plus x do this three property everybody's positive which is good 3x plus 12 <laughs> three property done can we combine like terms we can't because there's nothing on like terms on either side we have variables on both sides still so let's get rid of the one with a lower, uh, smaller coefficient, which is x. Remember, there's a 1 here. So to get rid of that x, I do minus x, which means I do minus x on this side. So these two goes away. I get 32 equals 2x plus 12. Now, I'm going to do minus 12 on this side. And minus 12, again, I'm going to do a wall. These two go away. 32 minus 12 is 20 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, x equals 10. So how old is the mother now? Well, the daughter is 10, right? x equals 10, so we can come back to the table and say that the uh, daughter is 10. And the mom is obviously 28 plus 10, which makes the mom 38 years old. Uh, Ron is, okay, so again, uh, Ron is 60 year older than his wife, Bev. So again, same type of problem. So let's call Ron, let's call Bev, um, but there's one, so this is the now. So right now, Ron is six, year, oh, six years older than Bev, the wife. So we don't want the wife's age, so we call her X. 
which means bonds x, x plus 6. In four years, so four years from now, dev is going to be x plus 4. And then ron is going to be x plus 6 plus 4, or x plus 10. I don't know why I did this extra column here. Now that we have the information, we can set up an equation. So in four years, twice his age, so twice, two times ron's age, plus 1, right? Twice his age, plus 1, will be, is equals, 3 times Bev's age, 3 times Bev's age is x plus 4. Three years ago. So we actually have to do uh, 3 times Bev's, Bev's age, so this is minus 3. Okay, so how old are they? Three times Beth's age three years ago. Sorry, I forgot. So, so three years ago, uh, Bev was actually x plus one, right? Because this is four years in the future, so three years ago she was x plus one. Okay. Right. Now we get to set it up. So it's two x distributed property plus twenty plus one three x plus three. Um, combine like terms, yeah, 2x plus 21 on that side. Here we can't combine anything. We have variables on both sides, so let's get rid of the one with the smaller coefficient, get rid of the 2x, so we're going to do minus 2x, so we're going to do minus 2x. That goes away, 21 comes down, and I get x plus 3. Right, because 3x minus 2x is x, and the 3 comes down. Now, how do I get that to look like this, right? Variable is isolated, so I'm going to do minus 3 on this side, and I'm going to do minus 3 on this side. These two goes away, x comes down, 21 minus 3 is 18, which means that Bev is 18, which makes Ron 18 plus 6, which Ron makes, that means he's 24. Okay? All right. Sorry. Cramps my legs. Uh, solve the following equation. Let's see. Uh, this one is probably one where you have to clear, right, the denominator. I, I would. Um, let's see if I can clear it now. I'm actually going to do this treaty proper and then I'm going to clear. So we get 64 minus, sorry, equals. Multiply these two. Yeah, if I multiply these two, I get negative 15 over 2. And then negative times a negative is a positive. 1 over 2, that becomes a 1, 2. I get negative 15 over 6. Oh, sorry. Uh, remember, this becomes like this. So I get 15 over 6. Oh, I forgot the M. So there's an M here. And then negative times a negative is a positive. And then if I simplify it, that becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. So on the top, 15 times 1 is just 15, and at the bottom, 2 times 3 is 6. I'm going to erase that. And then we have minus 11 over 4m. Okay, so we can clear the fractions, right? Clear the denominator, and we can multiply. What's the um, least common multiple? The least common multiple between is 12. So I'm going to multiply this side by 12, and I multiply this side by 12. I got a calculator here. <sighs> 12 times 64, and that's going to give us 768. So this is 768. So if I multiply, again, we're multiplying all these three terms inside the parentheses by 12. If I multiply that by 12, it's actually 12 divided by 2, which is 6, and then 6 times 15. So I get negative 90. M. Uh, this is going to be 2 or plus 30, 15 over 6 times 12 is just 15 times 2, uh, which is 30, and then minus 12 divided by 4 is 3, and then you get times 11, 33. 768, combine like terms, I can combine the M's, so I get 90 and 33. 
going to give me 1 to negative 123. m plus 30. I subtract 30 from each side. Right, and then let me shift it over here. 768 minus 30. It's going to give me 738. So continue over here. 38 positive. These two 30s become 0 equal to negative 1. If I divide both sides by negative 123, divide this by negative 123, m is going to equal negative 6. <clears throat> so, yeah, m equals negative 6. Let me see if I'm correct. So I'm going to erase this. I'll go back to my original equation. So this is a solvent check problem. So every, anywhere I see m, I'm going to replace it with negative 6. So it equals 15 over 4. 2 times negative 6 minus 2 thirds minus 11 over 4 times negative 6. So that's what I have. I know it's a pain, but hey. 64 equals, and let's do the parentheses here. So I got negative 15 over 4. That becomes negative 12 minus 2 thirds. Okay. Um, and this is going to be a positive because the negative times the negative is a positive. And if I simplify this, 3 over 2. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. I'm going to write 11 over 2. Um, 64 again equals negative 15 over 4. And then inside the parentheses, I actually, negative 12 minus 2 thirds is actually just negative 12 and 2 thirds. Okay, plus 11 over 2. So now I'm going to put that in a calculator. Um, let's see if I'm correct. 15, uh, negative 15 over 4 times negative 12 and 2 thirds. Okay, and that's going to give me 47 and 6 over 12. So this, so 64 equals, and this is going to be 47 and a half, by the way, plus, and let me change the 11 over 2 to a, uh, to a mixed number, so it's 5 and a half, so think about it, it's 47 and a half plus 5 and a half, 64, right, so 47.5 plus 5.5 plus 5.5 equals 53, oh no, where did I make a mistake? Oh, no, 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 wait a second, negative 12 and two-thirds, three over, two. oh, I see, here's my mistake, so my mistake is here, okay, so this is 33 over 2, my apologies, 33 over 2. This is 33 over 2. I'm going to change 33 over 2 to 16 and a half. Okay, 33 divided by 2 is 16 and a half. Now, let's see if I'm correct. 47.5 plus 16.5 equals 64. So that equals 64. The left side equals 64. So we're okay. okay. All right, moving on. Two trains leave stations 364 miles apart. So we have train one going this way and train B going this way. I know this distance right now is 364 miles. One travels at 55 and the other one tra travels 75. How long will it take for the two trains to meet? So, all right, so we got A and B R, T, and D. First train, let's call it a train A. It's going to let's call that 55. So let me write 55 over here. Train B is going the other way. It's traveling 75. Uh, do I know how long each train? What do you call traveled? No. So both are T. The distance is just product of R times T. So this is 55 T, and this is 75. Right, so what do I know about the distance that train A traveled and the distance of train B traveled? Well, I know that if I add those two distances, the train this this is the distance that uh, train A traveled plus 
the distance that the train B traveled added up together equals 365. All right, so now add these two. 55 plus 75 gives me 130, 130t equals 364, divide both sides by 130, and t equals, let's see if I can simplify that. Uh, Make it a little prettier than that. Uh, what is it? 130? No, hang on a second. Sorry, guys. 364 over 130. Enter, simplify. Oh my god, my calculator keeps disappearing. Enter. Enter. Okay. So we can call this two. Leave it as 2, 104 over 130, which you can still simplify, and I will ask for the simplify. So that's 52 over 65. So each train traveled for 2 hours and 52 and 65 of an hour. Okay. Of an hour. Okay. okay. So this one is a Huh, interesting problem. We have Heather. She's going up the stream. And, uh, and then she turns around the boat. So here's a starting point where you put a start. And then she turns around, turns the boat around, and goes down. So what do I know? So so far, there are a couple of things I know. This distance going up and this distance going down are equal to each other. So that already helps me set up my equation. I know both distances are going to be equal. Now, there is a little tricky part. First of all, the current, it says, is moving at a rate for 3 meters per second. So if you're going up the stream, right, you're fighting the current. Heather is, it says Heather can paddle at a rate of 7 meters. So she's not really going up the stream at 7 meters per second. You know why? Because the current is against her. So if you, she's actually going at a rate of 4 meters per second. Because there's a little difference, right? Because she's going against the current. But on her way down... Right, the current is behind her, right? So she's actually paddling at seven meters, but she has a little help. The current's helping her. So when she comes down, she's actually coming down at 10 meters per second because you're going to add her speed plus the speed of the current. So that's that's the tricky part in this question. Everything else is the same. Um, so let's set this up. Up, down. We have R, T, D. So going up the stream, like I said, she's going against the current. So it's 7 minus 3. So her actual speed is 4. Coming down, it's her speed plus the current. So she's actually traveling at 10 meters per second. The other thing here is time. Notice that our rate here is expressed in meters per second. So although they gave us a time of 5 minutes, we're not going to use 5 minutes. We're actually going to use 300 seconds. Okay. To keep everything in the same unit. Now, <clears throat> I don't know how long it took her to go up. Neither do I know how long it took her to go down. So, if I say that the time it took her to go up the stream is t, the time that she spent going down the stream would be the 300 seconds. Take away the t. Okay. The distance. Now, the easy part. We multiply. We get 14. 10 times 300 is 3,000 minus, and 10 times t is 10t. So there is our distance expressed by those two expressions. So now, what did I tell you about the distance? Well, the distances are equal to each other. Then 4t equals 3,000 minus 
It's 10 teeth. Um, let's see what we can do. We're going to get rid of the one with a smaller coefficient. Yeah, so we do plus 10 t on this side, which means I do plus 10 t on this side. That goes away. I get 14 t equals 3,000. And if I divide both sides by 14, you might have to do some rounding here. So t equals 3,000 divided by 14, 3,000 divided by 14. It's going to give us 214. I'm going to write it to the hundreds, 214.29 seconds. So that means she spent 214 seconds, 0.29, going up the stream. 214.29 seconds going up the stream. Which means down the stream is obviously the difference between that, right? So 300 minus 214.29, it means that going down the stream, I'm going to write it over here, it's 83. She spent 83.71 seconds going down, and then up she spent 214 seconds. Point twenty nine. Now, to find a distance, well, we know what t is, right? So we're going to multiply 4 times t, which is, uh, again, the time, 214.29. I multiply those two, 4 times 214.29, I get 857.16. And that's how far up she traveled before turning, turning it around. Um, Turning around. Now, just to confirm, right, let me substitute. So on the second part, so the distance that she went up, which is this one, and the distance that she went down should be the same. So if I do 3,000 minus 10 times t, again, what was t? 2 and 14. 29. So if I do that, I should get this number over here because the downstream uh, distance should be the same. So if you put it in your calculator, 3,000 minus, and let's move the decimal, 214. 2442.9, right? It should be that number over here. So 3000 minus 214.9, and <clears throat> sorry, 3000 minus 2142, sorry, 0.9 equals 857, right? 0.1. So we're very, very close. All right, so that's the answer to that. Um, where are we? Last question. Oof. Okay, you're on a plane running northbound. So here's your plane. Uh, here's your plane. Okay, going north or into the wind. So again, into the wind, and it takes four hours. Well, four hours to fly to sister. So you're going against the wind. So whatever speed the airplane is going that way. You gotta take a little bit off, okay? The flight home, the wind takes three hours, so it takes four hours to go up, right? Because you're going against the wind, and then coming back down, look, it takes three hours and 18 minutes. Why? Because you've got the wind behind you pushing or helping you. The wind speed, speed is 40. What is the speed of the plane without any wind? Okay, so. I guess, and south. Um, RTD. <clears throat> so going north, the rate is going to be R minus 30, the speed of the airplane. Sorry, not minus 30, minus 40, because that's the wind. Going south, the speed of the airplane is going to be speed of the airplane plus 40, right because it's definitely faster uh, time wise we get four hours going north and then three hours and 18 minutes uh, let's see how we can express that um, it's 3 18 over 60 right 18 minutes over 60 which is an hour or if we simplify this we can divide this by six yeah dividing by six that's three three and three over 20 that's the time. Okay. You can't write three hours and eighteen. Okay, so it's three and three twentieth. Um and now you get to do the multiplication part. So this becomes four R minus one sixty. Ugh. Let me see if I can put this. I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna write twenty times three sixty, sixty three over twenty. 
All right. So this is going to become 63 over 20 R plus, and that simplifies 1, 2, that becomes 126. So if you multiply 40 times 23 over 20, you get 126. So 40, yeah, we get 126. So now what do I know about both distances? I know both distances are equal, so I, my equation is 4R minus 160 equals 63 over 20. Don't forget, yeah, R plus 126. Okay. Um, which I am going to now change this back to 3 and 3 twentieth. R, so let's yeah variables on both sides get rid of this guy right minus 3 and 3 20th that goes away we're left with 17 over 20 over here r minus 160 plus 126 we add 126 on both sides okay and then here we're going to get seven. So I'm going to put it over here. 17 over 20 r equals that goes away. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. All right. I gotta go back again. Sorry. I apologize. It's not plus 126. It's plus 160. Jeez. Plus 160. Apologies. That goes away. And I'm left with 17 over 20 r equals 286. Right. Now it's a one-step equation. We can multiply by the reciprocal, which is 20 over 17, and multiply that by the reciprocal, 20 over 17. That simplifies to one. R finally equals 287, ugh, I don't even know what that is, 286 times uh, 20 over 17. Hopefully that works out nicely. Enter. Speed is 336, eight over 17 miles per hour. So there's, there's your answer. So the last two, a little bit more, right? That gives you something to think about, okay? Um, yeah, that's that.